Good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Krista Armstrand. My partner is Stephanie Robinson, and we did neur neural cardiogenic syncope. So we got our article from NCBI um, and PMC, which is the U.S. National Library of Medicine and National Institute of Health. Our article's title was Neurocardiogenic Syncope, and the, the article was about comparing syncope and neurocardiogenic syncope. So syncope is defined as a transient loss of consciousness with loss of posture and has a 30% reoccurrence rate in hospitals. For neuro neurocardiogenic syncope, it's, it's defined as a syndrome in which triggering of a neural reflex results in self-limiting episodes of systemic hypotension. It's also characterized by brady bradycardia and peripheral vaso vasodilation. So some of the causes behind them for syncope, it's uh, listed as a synonym, a, a, a symptom, sorry. Um, it's classified according to the underlying cause. Uh, usually it's due to neurological, metabolic, psychiatric, or cardiac. Um, neurocardiogenic syncope, it's usually uh, caused by abnormal or exaggerated autonomic responses to various stimuli. Um, usually can be uh, prolonged standing or something emotional. Um, the mechanism involves reflex-mediated changes in heart rate or vascular tone caused by the activation of cardiac C-fibers. So the pathology, pathophysiology of neurocardiogenic syncope, uh, this was a chart that was in, uh, in our case study, um, and it kind of just takes you through each type of syncope. So it starts at neurocardiogenic, and it kind of shows you that it's due to pa uh, panic, fright, uh, Post-exercise, it, it leads to an increase in sympathetic tone, an increase in heart rate and contractibility, and then stimulation of cardiac C-fibers. Then you have the cardiac ca cardioid sinus syncope, which is caused by head turning, tight neck wear, shaving, and anything near the carotid artery. Um, stimulation of the cardioid si sinus with the cardiopulmonary receptor stimulation. Then you have situational syncope, which is usually due to uh, excessive coughing, sneezing, swallowing, defecation, micturation. Um, it's the stimulation of anything within the gastrointestinal receptors, cerebral cortex, and cardiopulmonary receptors. And then you have the glossopharyngeal and trigeminal neuralgia syncope, which is anything to do with throat or face pain. Um, and it's usually the stimulation of cranial nerves um, and glossopharyngeal and trigeminal nerves. And then this was a second chart included in our case study, and it kind of shows their activation of receptors in neurally mediated syn syncopal syndromes. Um, so you can see for cranial nerves, you have the glossopharyngeal neuralgia, gastrointestinal, you have defecation, micturation. For cardiac C-fibers, you have hypovolemia, dehydration. Uh, for cardiopulmonary receptors, you have coughing, head turning, um, you have for the cerebral cortex, you have panic fright, pain, which all leads to the stimulation of medullary vasodepressor region. Um, this all increases the vagal tone uh, leading to bradycardia and then a decreased sympathetic tone uh, further leading to vasodilation. The reduced venous, re venous return and decreased cardiac output with resultant cerebral hypofusion um, leads to syncope. So some clinical signs and symptoms, although the presentation of neurocardiogenic syncope is similar to other types of syncope, if there is loss of consciousness, then there, it may be accompanied by nausea, diaphoresis, lightheadedness, blurred vision, headaches, palpitations, paresthesia, and pallor, which will be resolved when in the supine position. And then some further signs and symptoms of syncope, um, there's an assessment of the symptoms and settings and settings is needed to form a conclusion with syncope. After cough, defecation, micturation, it's usually attributed to situational syncope. For glossopharyngeal and trigeminal neuralgia pain, uh, the neural it's usually attributed to neural mediated syncope with neuralgia. Um, and then any type of rotation or turning the head or pressure on the carotid sinus leads to carotid sinus syncope. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Robinson, and I will be taking over from my partner, Crystal Ramson. Okay, so we'll be discussing the diagnosis of uh, neurocardiogenic syncope. 
So assessment of associated symptoms is needed. The settings, the medication, and the family history and physical exam can all point towards the type of syncope that is diagnosed. Structural cardiac disease and cardiac arrhythmias must be ruled out first, especially in older people with a higher chance of syncope. Neurocardiogenic syncope results from excessive autonomic reflex activity, which appears as abnormal vascular tone and heart rate. Common differential diagnosis includes carotid sinus hypersensitivity and orthostatic hypotension. Uh, the diagnosis continued includes ruling out differential diagnosis that I mentioned on the prior slide. Orthostatic hypotension, for instance, is a drop in blood pressure on assuming an upright position and is due to failure of the auto autonomic system to compensate for venous pooling in the lower extremities, which results in reduced venous return, decreased cardiac output, and cerebral hyperfusion. Failure of the autonomic reflex responses are more common in LGD population. Um, for the carotid sinus hypersensitivity, that's the um, other differential diagnosis, uh, syncope or presyncope results resulting from an extreme reflex response to carotid sinus stimulation. It can be a carotid sinus hypersensitivity massage and carotid sinus hypersensitivity is diagnosed when a greater or equal to 50 millimeter um, HG reduction is in systolic blood pressure or a ventricular pause of greater or equal to three um, seconds occurs with a five to 10 seconds carotid sinus ma uh, massage is done, more common in um, individuals above 40 years. So how do you get a positive diagnosis? A positive diagnosis is observed when the orthostatic stress test, which is the health, the head up tilt test, normal when there's a tilting causing a reduction in venous return with subsequent baroreceptor stimulation and increased alpha and beta adrenogenic um, tone averting syncope. Positive test tilting causes um, decreased venous return, but sympathetic tone increases with stimulation of cardiac C fibers. Officially positive, if it's officially positive, if the original symptoms are re reproduced along with an abrupt drop in blood pressure, heart rate, or both. Other ways that you can diagnose or get a positive um, diagnosis includes electrocardiographic recordings, including event records and analysis of heart rate variability.